Hello! In this video, I'll let you in on the story behind Schecta, as I show you how to tell an original Van Nuys Schecta from a later model. And Van Nuys Schecters are the guitars and basses built in the original shop in Van Nuys, or by parts made in the same facility, from 1976 to 1984. In the mid-1970s or so, all the big manufacturers struggled with quality, and therefore there was a market for high-end counterparts. In 1976, Dave Schechter started out making pickup assemblies. Eventually, Schechter produced all parts needed for building a guitar or bass, so why not expand to assembling whole guitars as well? Thus, the first so-called dream machines left the Schechter shop in February 1979. You could still just order the various components for a guitar, have it assembled by a luthier, or do it yourself. Those became known as Schecter shop models, part builds, or dealer builds. Schecter was making replacement parts for both Fender and Gibson, and to some extent Rickenbacker models. But Schecter's own guitars were almost exclusively based on the four classic original Fender designs, Stratocasters, Telecasters, precision and jazz basses. Whereas Fender used rather common woods for their necks and painted guitar bodies, Schecter often used exotic woods and perhaps in order to show this, the bodies were usually left unpainted. Often you see brass and metal replacing plastic to make it more luxurious, I guess, but the downside to all this was a gain weight. Compared to contemporary Fender guitars, Schecters were well built, heavy, and handmade hot rodded guitars with price tags that matched today's Fender Custom Shop. And since it was a small shop, they only did like one or two guitars a week, so I guess we can add Rare to that list as well. Here's an example of an early precision shape based from around 1980. First off, there's no decal or logo on the headstock, which tells me that it's a parts built. Whereas Dream Machines always came with a race logo in metal or a decal on the lacquer on the headstock, parts builds often didn't. Some dealers did have either silver or black decals to put on though, and very few had the raised logo as well. A Dream Machine would also sport a neck plate serial number, usually an S followed by four digits, so they are pretty easy to spot. One more indication pointing to this being merely a parts build, as there is none. Next up is taking off the neck to look for coats in the neck pocket and on the heel of the neck. Most pieces have two numbers. The one usually beginning with F for Fender perhaps refers to the catalog or a price list displaying which shape and what kind of wood were used. This has F6890 which according to the 79 catalog is a PJ model made of core. One piece actually, which many early ones are. The neck is too early to have a wood coat, but it's clearly maple. The other number is a serial, which can roughly put the piece on a timeline. Short of 10,000 necks and bodies were produced in the Van Nuys shop, and they were all sequenced by the same numbers. Neck serial 2691 and body serial 3940 tell us that the neck is probably from 1979, while the body was made around 80. These numbers, the Schecter stamps, the skunk stripe and general build quality show that this is built from genuine Van Nuys Schecter parts. Finally, the pickups are also made in Van Nuys, and as you can see, they do not have any poles sticking out like vintage single coils, so they're easy to identify. Newer ones look alike, but the poles are shinier and look a bit different. Next up is the Stratocaster model. According to the 1981 price list, F707Q spells Indian Laurel and F6570 would be Shedua. Both have a serial in the early 4000s, which I say is 1981. No logo and no neck plate serial mean that this is a parts build as well. Most Van Nuys Schecter necks were one piece constructions like this, 50s style. Van Nuys pickguards are per default one ply 50 style, five hole tailors, eight hole strats and so on, but three ply came late in the game. 
It's fitted with Schecter's finest, the Super Rock Humbugger pickup assembly, which is a Swiss army knife in sounds covering pop, blues, jazz and heavy metal. Here's another Stratocaster model. This Mabel Nick has a glued on fretboard as on Fenders from the 60s. A rare bird compared to the One Piece necks. And like all their nice Schecter necks, it has a skunk stripe and neck adjustment through the heel of the neck. F 72S spells Mabel with an Indian lower fretboard, one of five possible options for this kind of neck. F676Q means that the body is made of satin walnut, two piece. 1PW seems to have assembled this guitar or at least crafted the neck in March 1982, which is why I assume that the 6000s are roughly 1982. No plastic parts are used as you can see, and like the previous Stratocaster it has the Super Rock assembly, which comes with push-pull functions in two of the knobs to access all of the variations the pickups have to offer. Here's a painted dream machine jazz bass. It has the decal placed in the right angle on the lacquer, which compared to the previous Stratocaster is how they look when factory fitted, and most important proof of this being a dream machine, it has the S serial number on the neck plate, which is used exclusively on in-house models. Dream machines were their premium custom product, but many parts builds are equally good guitars. Genuine dream machines are rare. It is estimated that only 25% of their guitars were assembled in the shop, which means like 1,250 or so genuine dream machines in all. So this is a pretty rare guitar by any standard, as it is a dream machine of course, but also a lefty. Notice the three switches pickup system that was used on single coil fitted Stratocaster models. If we compare all this to the so called Dallas Jector from the mid 80s or so, we can see that only the type font on the headstock and the metal knobs show some resemblance to the Van Nuys Jector. This is from when the company was taken over and moved to Dallas, hence the nickname. Early Dallas sectors are sometimes seen with leftover Van Nuys parts, but this isn't one of them. Gone are the exotic wood, the skunk stripe, the attention to detail and of course the meticulous build quality of the Van Nuys shop. Cheap plastic has replaced the metal and this very narrow neck plate reveals that this is in fact made of Japanese parts, complete with a one hole back plate and three ply pickguard. It still has the Fender headstock design though, although not quite as accurate. That was changed in the early 90s or so as a result of a lawsuit from Fender. Schecters of today are made in both the US and in South Korea. They are easy to spot as they all have different headstock designs and often non-Fender shaped bodies as well. None of these have any resemblance to the Van Nuys Schecters apart from the name. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll be able to spot the real deal from the crowd. Please join the Schecter Van Nuys forum on Facebook for more info, more guitars and maybe to meet up with the guys from back then. Have a nice day.